The next question is the question that I got the most. I definitely noticed some changes in my body. Were you always this fit? I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Do you have Mexican roots? So that's a whole nother story. Favorite place you've traveled to? It did not happen overnight. Why did you become interested in food and fitness? So that was like kind of the start of our travels together. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be a Q&A. So I will be answering questions that you guys asked on Instagram. And this is actually the second time that I'm recording this video because the first time I recorded it, I was back in Mexico with William and we recorded it at the pool where we were staying in Playa del Carmen. And there just happened to be some kids that were swimming very close to us. So they were kind of splashing around and like screaming a little bit. Bring any more work. <laughs> Even so many. Okay. So it made the audio really difficult to hear. I'm still going to be including some footage from that first Q and A, but I'll be answering most of the questions um, today. So yeah, I am here back in Texas, and I have some coffee. But without further ado, let's get into the questions. So I saved all the questions you guys asked on my phone, so I'll just be looking down at my phone periodically. So the first question is, favorite place you've traveled to? I would say my favorite place I've ever been to has to be Greece. I went to Greece in November 2019, which was just a few months before the pandemic happened. I actually went to go visit William, so it was actually our first trip together and it was also my first time ever going to Europe so I was amazed by how beautiful the country is. So I met up with William in Hania, Crete and I only stayed there one night and then from Hania we went to Santorini for a few days and Santorini is so amazingly beautiful it's like it's not even real. We actually stayed in this really cool Airbnb in Ia and our place was one of the highest points in that region so the view from that place was just amazing. Um, I want to go back so bad. The food also was incredible. So much fresh food. You can order a Greek salad with feta anywhere. And then once, after we spent a few days in Santorini, we went to Athens and we got to see the Parthenon, which was really, really cool. But yeah, I would say I would recommend for anybody to go to Greece, Santorini as well. It's definitely not overrated. You're gonna have a great time no matter what, no matter what time of year you go. So yeah, it's definitely my favorite place so far. What do you do for a living? So I'm a registered dietitian and registered dietitians are people who went to school to study nutrition and dietetics. So depending on what area you work in, if you work in a hospital, you're gonna be recommending diet therapies for people that have certain types of conditions like diabetes, chronic kidney disease in a school district, for example, you're going to be in charge of planning menus for the, um, the kids. There's also sports dietitians, so there's different areas you can work in. I'm applying for jobs at the moment to see like what's out there and what I want to do because I still don't really know. The next question is, what do you like most about Mexico? So I absolutely love Mexico. I've been traveling to Mexico for many, many years now. I think the thing that I like the most is just how rich the culture is in Mexico. They have so many different traditions, like Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. That's something that they do every year where they celebrate the dead, they make ofrendas, and they decorate the whole city. And as you guys know, I love the food in Mexico. The food is always so fresh and there's so much flavor in the food. There's so many different things I like, like mole. Um, of course, I love chicken fajitas the tacos, the salsas, <laughs> everything is just so, so good. Name your top five beach towns slash beach cities in Mexico. So this is kind of hard. I would say Holbosch is definitely my favorite beach town. It's a small island north of Cancun. William and I went there during the pandemic in 2020. I definitely fell in love with just how laid back and chill the vibe is there in Holbosch. Everything is uh, walking distance. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed Holbosch a lot. I'd say number two would have to be Akumal. Akumal is a small beach town, which is on the Caribbean side. So Akumal is famous for turtles. I also like how Akumal, there's not a ton of huge beach resorts. It's also very laid back. 
Um, really, really pretty. There's so many palm trees everywhere. So yeah, I really like Akumo. I'd say number three would have to be Huatulco. Huatulco is in Oaxaca, so it's on the Pacific side. And there are so many different beaches in Oaxaca. And although the water isn't exactly the same as like it is in the Caribbean, the water is super clear and the snorkeling is great. It's also a really family friendly place. There's less American tourists that go there. And then I would have to say, hmm, Masunte, which is also in Oaxaca. It's a very, very laid back vibe there as well. There's lots of hippies there. There's lots of really cool spots to eat. The beaches are also nice in Masunte. And then I would have to say Puerto Angel. That was another really, really cute beach town. It's very small. Snorkeling is also really good there. There's lots of different bars and things to do. Those are my top five. How tall are you? I'm 5'4". So the next question is, what's your nationality? Do you have Mexican roots? Are you Latina? So I was born here in Texas, so I'm American. I do have Mexican roots, and yes, I am Latina. So my mom is Mexican. My mom was actually born in Laredo, Texas. Um, if you guys are familiar with Texas, you probably know Laredo. It's actually right on the border between Texas and Mexico. So she grew up there. She's bilingual. My dad, on the other hand, is white. He's of Irish heritage. So my dad's grandparents actually immigrated from Ireland. So they came on boats from Ireland and they came to Ellis Island in New York. So my dad's parents actually met in New York City in the Bronx and then they got married. I definitely look more like my mom than my dad. I don't really look like my dad very much. Maybe I'll put up a picture so you can see. I basically just inherited freckles from my dad because he has freckles all over his body. <laughs> so both me and my brother have freckles. But yeah, I definitely take more after my mom. So the next question is, do you speak Spanish? How fluent are you in Spanish? So I do speak some Spanish. I am not fluent. I can speak more conversationally, but I can also understand quite a bit. I actually took four years of Spanish in high school, but it didn't... Puedo entender mucho español, pero es más difícil para hablar. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can understand a lot. It's just I get stuck when I try to speak and I do want to become fluent. I just don't know the best way to try to reach that goal. Um, I did download Babbel. I, it's just, I just couldn't get into Babbel. I think I'm gonna try it again. My mom also had been giving me lessons, so I think we might do that again. But if you guys have other recommendations for learning Spanish, definitely comment below. Who speaks Spanish better, you or William? So. I do speak better Spanish than William, but that's understandable considering I took years in high school. But William is actually, he's actually able to understand quite a bit and he, he learned some um, while he was in Mexico, so. The next question is, do you have a workout routine? You are in great shape, thank you. How often do you work out? Do you do cardio and were you always this fit? So yes, I do have a workout routine. I'm slowly transitioning back into my routine. When William and I were traveling in Mexico, it was really, really hard to stick to a routine um, just because there weren't always gyms available. So we would have to rely on like doing workouts at home or like running. In terms of how often I work out, it's about four days per week. So I will typically do strength training, like lifting weights, um, and then I'll, I will do cardio as well about two times per week. I like to do cardio in the form of interval sprints on the treadmill or sometimes the Stairmaster, but typically I like doing my cardio in the form of running just because I feel like I get, I get my heart rate up really quickly and I like that. So I do strength training because my goal is always to try to build more lean muscle. In terms of my actual workouts, I will do leg day twice a week and then I'll do upper body twice a week. I'm also not a personal trainer. I never have been. This is just what I found works for me. And then they asked, were you always this fit? So I definitely was not always this fit. I started doing gymnastics when I was about seven years old and I continued that until I was about 14. 
So it was like six or seven years. After I quit gymnastics, I joined my high school's dance team. And we basically would just do like, we would perform at like football games, but then we would also have shows that we would do where we would learn, learn our dances and then perform them at different shows um, or competitions. Um, but then after high school, I did not join a sport in college or the dance team. So I was pretty much sedentary for about two years. And I noticed, I definitely noticed some changes in my body. So I gained kind of like the freshman 15 because I was not doing any sort of exercise. And then also I was at home. I had more time on my hands because I was in college classes. So I had breaks throughout the day. So I would come home and I would be bored and I would start eating. So I definitely gained a little bit of weight. I wasn't, I didn't look unhealthy by any means, but I just wasn't in shape and I could tell. So I noticed these changes in my body and I wanted to do something about it. So in 2012, I went to my campus gym and I knew absolutely nothing about working out. So all I did was go to the treadmill and I would just run like four miles and that was it. I did not ever enter into the weight room area. Um, I was very intimidated by the weights and the guys that would go to the gym. So all I did was run on the treadmill. I ended up losing quite a bit of weight, um, which I was okay about at the time, but I had no muscle and that was the problem. I remember I ended up searching workouts on YouTube and I think I came across Blogilates and she had a bunch of workouts on her YouTube channel and I started doing those and they were basically strength training at home workouts. So I started doing those. That's when I kind of started realizing that you can't just run on the treadmill and just call it a workout. Like you need to incorporate strength training to make these positive changes and to build muscle. So I think I did at home workouts for like eight months and I actually got really good results from that but the workouts at home started to get too easy and that's when I started going to the campus gym and I started slowly kind of getting into lifting weights. Um, I was very intimidated at first to go on, to go to the weight room and start lifting weights, but I just started going more often and eventually that fear went away. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I started getting into working out. I definitely saw my body change. I built muscle um, over time. It doesn't happen overnight and it just kind of fueled me to keep going. And now it's just like a part of my routine. So next question is, what do you eat in a day? Do you count calories? And no, I definitely don't count calories. I don't count macronutrients. But with that being said, I kind of know by looking at a food the approximate amount of calories that it has. But for me, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm not really trying to gain weight. So I don't see a point for me to count calories. It's very, very tedious. There's definitely a time and a place for that. Um, it can be helpful if you're wanting to lose weight just to be able to see um, how many calories are in certain foods because it can be a helpful tool. In terms of what I eat in a day, it does vary based on the day. I have protein with each meal, whether that's chicken, eggs, fish. I also include healthy fats with each meal, so that would be like avocado. I do incorporate a lot of fruits and vegetables in my diet, I just think that's really important. So an example for breakfast would be like, you guys have seen it a lot in past videos, but I love omelets with like a side of fruit or a piece of bread. For Lunch, sometimes it's as simple as like a salad with some fresh fruit like peaches or berries, um, walnuts with chicken, things like that. For dinner, I really, really love making stir fries. So like an Asian stir fry um, with a ton of different vegetables like snap peas, broccoli, um, mushrooms, carrots, things like that. And then I definitely am a snacker. So I love snacking on things like nuts. Um, I love popcorn. I love snacking on fruit. It definitely varies day to day. So the next question is, when slash why did you become interested in food and fitness? Um, so this question overlaps a little bit with the other question when I was talking about my workout routine. But basically, when I was 14 years old, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. 
uh, known as type 1 diabetes. And when I was diagnosed with that, it was known as juvenile diabetes. So pretty much this condition at the time was only diagnosed in children. There's two types of diabetes. There's type 2 diabetes, which is typically what older people are diagnosed with. Um, usually as a result of poor eating habits, whereas type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Even doctors today aren't sure why autoimmune diseases occur. Um, some doctors think that a virus triggers it. So in type 1 diabetes, the cells that produce insulin, which is a necessary hormone, are actually destroyed. So your body doesn't produce any insulin, so because of that, you have to inject insulin. So pretty much this requires kind of careful management of the amount of carbohydrates you consume because carbohydrates raise blood sugar. So I have to take insulin on a daily basis. I've had type 1 diabetes for over 15 years now, so it's not a big deal. It's just part of my life, and I don't even really think about it at all. Um, but this is part of the reason why I became interested in food. So after I got diagnosed with this condition, it made me realize how important food is and what we put into our bodies is really, really important um, just for our long-term health. So that's kind of what got me interested in food. And just in general, I've always loved food. I've always had a big appetite. I love trying new foods. So I, that's kind of why I became interested in food and nutrition, and that's why I decided to study nutrition in college. So growing up, I was always pretty lean, even when I was in gymnastics. I didn't have a ton of muscle, but I had like no body fat. I was just very, very lean. So that has actually carried with me into weightlifting. It's really, really hard for me to put on muscle. I've been consistently weight training since about 2013 2014 until now so my physique is a result of like many many years of weightlifting so just keep that in mind um, it did not happen overnight it's a very very slow process and just in general women have a harder time putting on muscle than men um, just because our hormones are very different and in terms of how I became interested in fitness like I mentioned before I had basically been sedentary for two years after graduating high school and just noticed that my body had changed not for the better and I just didn't have muscle and I had gained fat. So I wanted to change my body, I wanted to build lean muscle and that's basically how I got interested in starting with weightlifting and training. The next question is the question that I got the most. Um, it's, how did you meet William? Did you go to Texas State? And if so, is that where you met William? So we actually answered this question in the original Q&A that we filmed in Mexico. So I'll go ahead and insert that footage here. So I am from a town called San Marcos, Texas. It's where Texas State University is from. That's where we both went to college. Um, it's about 30 minutes from Austin, about 45 minutes from San Antonio. And then where are you from? Uh, Sweden. I speak to Sweden. Mm -hmm. So how did we meet? In uh, a dorm called Blanco Hall in San Marcos, Texas at Texas State University in 2009. Yeah, that's a definite answer. So yeah, so basically, William and I started college the same year, um, in the fall of 2009. So my friend was living in one of the dorms, and William was living in the same dorm. Because I was from San Marcos, my parents did not want to pay for me to live in the dorms because it was so much money. Um, so I was visiting my friend at the time, and she invited me to hang out with her and some of her friends. So we were in kind of the lounge area of the dorm there. And I remember seeing William, I saw his blonde hair, and I remember thinking he was cute. Um, and he came over, we were playing pool at the time, and he picked up the pool balls and started juggling them. And it made one of the guys mad that was playing pool. And um, so my friend just like introduced us. And then later on, I sent him a friend request. And then later on, some months later, he sent me a message and asked if we wanted to hang out. So basically, he asked me if we wanted, to, if I wanted to hang out with him, and I, we hung out a few times, um, and that's that's kind of how we met. William and I had hung out several times, but um, 
We sort of lost touch a few different times while we were in college and he ended up dating somebody else and then I ended up dating somebody else later on. And he ended up having to leave the US in 2015 because his visa was expiring. So I ended up reaching out to William later on in 2018 um, because he was starting to post YouTube videos and I saw them on his Facebook. So I reached out and I was like, these videos are really awesome. Like. I'm also trying to like start a YouTube channel too. So we ended up, you know, getting back in touch on Instagram and he was supposed to come to the US in September, 2019. He was gonna be visiting some friends and I was like, hey, you should come visit. You should come and visit me. We can catch up, blah, blah, blah. So that was the plan, but that didn't end up working out. Some of you guys may have seen his um, video about getting denied entry into the US. So that's a whole nother story. So he wasn't able to come to the US in September, 2019. And at that point we were still communicating and he told me that he was gonna be going to live in Greece for a little bit and he invited me to come visit him in Greece. So that is why I ended up going to Greece in November, 2019. So yeah, that was our very first trip together. It was so much fun. Um, it was awesome getting to see him after many years and yeah, that was like kind of the start of our travels together. Alright guys, this is the end of part one of this Q&A. I had to split it up into two parts because it was too long, but the second part will be up very soon, so stay tuned for that. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you so much for watching.